So looking at index notation today. So index notation is basically just a fancy uh, way of saying writing numbers as powers. Okay, so there's a few um, terms that we need to be aware of. Okay, because um, in lots of different questions, you might be asked to give your answer in a particular form. So we have expanded form. So expanded form um, means writing the number out as a repeated multiplication. So we would have 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. All right. Expanded form must show your multiplication symbols. Then we have index form. So index form is writing your number as a power. So taking my example of 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, um, that in index form looks like 2 to the power of 4 because, of course, we have our base is 2, right? That's our big number that we're talking about. And 1, 2, 3, 4, there is 4 of them. 4 is our power, okay? You may also be asked to give your answer as a basic numeral. So basic numeral is the power evaluated. So 2 to the power of 4 or 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 gives us 16. 16 is the basic numeral. Okay, um, prime factorization involves writing a number as a product of its prime factors. So you can take a number like 72. Um, I chose 72 because 72 has lots of different um, factors that multiply to give 72. So I want to show you what happens when I just randomly take different factors. What we'll do is we'll reduce those factors down to their prime factors and I'll show you that no matter what two numbers you choose in the beginning, um, you will end up with the same numbers at the end. So I've kind of forgot to leave myself some room here so hopefully we can work it out. So 72, um, we know that 8 times 9 is 72. So we can split it as 8 and 9. Okay, neither of those are prime numbers, so we split them again. So factors of 8, we have 2 and 4. 2 is a prime number, so it is now finished. 4, we can split as 2 times 2. Prime number, prime number, prime number, can't go any further. Okay, 9, we can split as 3 times 3, which are also is also a prime number. So 72 written as a product of its prime factors looks like 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. If you go to the trouble of multiplying those together, you do end up with 72. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 3 is 24, times 3 is 72. Now, we can actually write that um, in our index form. So we 2 times 2 times 2 is 2 to the power of 3. And 3 times 3 is 3 squared. Now we can't join those. All right, so we do still need our multiplication symbol there. Um, I just, hopefully I've got room, but I want to show you what happens if you um, didn't choose 8 and 9. So if you chose something like 12 and 6. Okay, um, 12 is not prime, so we'll split it up. Uh, and I've got 3 times 4. 3 is prime, 4 is not, 2 times 2 gives me 4, um, 6 is not prime, and I've got 3 times 2. Lo and behold, I've got 3 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 2, which you will notice I've got 2 to the power of 3 and 3 squared. So it doesn't matter what factors you choose in the beginning, writing a number as a product of its prime factors, will only there will only ever be one solution to that. Okay. Now, you may also, as I said before, be asked to write a number in its expanded form. All right, so that's where we'll be given um, a term in its index form and we need to write it in expanded. So a to the power of 3 is going to become simply a times a times a. So if you're not sure, 1, 2, 3, 3 is our power, that's our expanded form. Okay, x, y, all to the power of 4. Now it's really important to note that x and y are both being put to the power of 4. So this in expanded form, hopefully I've got room, in expanded form is going to look like x times y times x times y times x times y times x 
times y. Poor management here. Or you could write as x times x times x times x times y times y times y times y. Okay, as long as you have four of each because the brackets indicate that both x and y have been put to the power of four. Okay, now where we've got two a cubed or a to the power of three, b squared or b to the power of two. We need to notice that two has not been put to any power. All right, so two is going to stand on its own. So we've got two times a times a times a, there's three of those, three is our power, times b times b, two of those, two is our power. That's our expanded form. Okay, now sometimes we may be asked to either write in expanded form, then evaluate, or write something as a basic numeral. Remembering a basic numeral is a common number. Right, so 5 to the power of 3, so this particular question asks us to do expanded form, then evaluate, right? So 5 to the power of 3 gives us 5 times 5 times 5, which of course 5 times 5 is 25, times 5 is 125. Now, I have written in expanded form, then evaluated. All right, so same goes for if we've got a negative. What's this, what this is saying is that we've got negative two to the power of five. So we've got negative two times negative two times negative two times negative two, one, two, three, four, times negative two. All right, if you can remember back to year seven, if we have an odd number, of negatives that we are multiplying, our answer will be negative because negative times negative is positive, times a negative again is negative, times a negative is a positive, times a negative is a negative. So if you can't remember from year seven, if you have an even number of negatives that you are multiplying or dividing, your solution will be positive. If you have an odd number, your solution will be negative. Okay, so we know our solution is negative because we have an odd power. Uh, 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32. So negative 2 all to the power of 5 becomes negative 32. Now, you can check these on your calculator. That is perfectly fine. However, because the um, question has asked us to write it in expanded form first, we have to show that as part of our solution. Okay? If you just throw that straight in your calculator, you haven't actually addressed what the question has asked you to do. So make sure you read really carefully um, the requirements of every question that you do. Okay, so we have 2 over 3 um, all to the power of 3. So if we write that in expanded form, we've got 2 over 3 times 2 over 3 times 2 over 3. Okay, um, and then we're going to evaluate that. So of course, multiplying fractions, we go straight across the top. 2 times 2 times 2, or 2 to the power of 3, gives us 8. 3 times 3 times 3, or 3 to the power of 3, gives us 27. Okay, um, always check if that simplifies. 8 over 27 doesn't, however, simplify. Okay, and lastly, you may be asked to go from expanded form to index form, which is just going back the other way. So we've got 6 times a times a times a. So 6 is out there on its own. It has no power. There's no other 6s. And then there's 3 of those, so it becomes 6a to the power of 3. Okay. Um, then we've got 3 over 7 times 3 over 7 times 4 over 5 times 4 over 5 times 4 over 5. So we've got two of these, 3 over 7s. So that means I've got 3 over 7 to the power of 2 multiplied by, then I have 3, 4 over 5. So I've got 4 over 5 all to the power of 3. Okay. Hopefully that clears up any questions you may have had about index notation. Um, remember, read questions really carefully about the requirements of um, your answer. You will be asked to give your answer in a particular 
format. Okay, basic numeral, they want you to evaluate it, turn it into a number. Index form, write it as a power. Expanded form, you need to have your multiplication symbols between your terms. Okay, um, give, it a, give us a like if that was helpful. Don't forget to subscribe so you get notified when I upload new videos. And um, you can comment below if there's anything else you would like me to cover.